This chapter will focus on imaging and radiology. First, let's start by talking about the data, specifically the different projections, also known as views, of chest x-rays. The process of taking an x-ray depends on what clinical questions are being asked and what is visible in that projection to answer that question. The frontal view is the most standard. This can be taken from back to front, known as the posterior anterior, or from front to back, known as the anterior posterior. These are often considered interchangeable, but there are some subtle differences. A lateral view is taken from the side and is often taken to complement a frontal view. The AP supine view is when a patient is laying down and is often for patients who cannot stand up and typically is of lower quality. For a quick history about the field, let's discuss the chest x-ray 14 dataset from the NIH. This was the data set that enabled deep learning models to first work on chest x-rays because there were over 100,000 images released publicly. Later that year, a group at Stanford trained a dense net on the NIH data and reported better performance than radiologists. Some caveats here are that the model and the radiologist were only presented with a frontal image alone and no clinical data. However, it is still an impressive result which demonstrated the potential for impact in clinical practice. One challenge in this field is labels. There has been criticism written about the discrepancies in ground truth labels on datasets, specifically the chest X-ray 14 dataset shown here. However, the issue of inter-rater variability for some radiological findings goes back as early as 1949 and, is, and likely can be a difference in clinical practice or medical background. This doesn't mean the models are not useful, as supported by the results of the Stanford study, but that special care must be taken in their evaluations. 2019 was the year of the chest x-ray dataset. Three datasets, all larger than it in the NIH, were released from three regions across the globe, all with multiple views and more or different labels to predict. Most of these datasets use an automatic labeler to assign labels to each image given a text-based radiology report, and the others are manually labeled by hand. Most use NLP rule-based models, which will output a positive, negative, or unknown label. The format of the labels between the datasets will vary, so be cautious. The RSNA and Google datasets shown here have relabeled samples from the NIH dataset, but only for a few of the tasks. These can be very useful as an external test set for evaluation. Note, there are data loaders for all of these datasets in the Torch X-ray Vision library. One aspect of this domain is that multiple views can be acquired for a patient in one session. We would like to take advantage of these different views. As an example, for the tasks of predicting a flattened diaphragm and predicting pleural effusion, using only the lateral view rather than only the frontal view has been shown to perform more accurately. This implies making predictions from both views would be beneficial. Another multi-view use case in radiology is with MRI. Here, the different views are configurations of the image acquisition process, which yield different images and aspects of the brain. Unlike x-ray, there can be quite a lot of views for a single session. A challenge here is that you won't have all inputs all the time. Requiring many views will limit the amount of data you can have and how easily a model can be deployed. There are many approaches to take advantage of multiple views with neural networks. Let's go over some basic ones. We can combine the inputs by concatenating them together at the input, which is a simple and basic approach. This works if the sizes are similar, but doesn't make much sense if the views don't share common image features. It also generally requires both views be present at the same time. An alternative called HEMIS is to run independent networks for a few layers 
and then take the mean of their activations somewhere in the middle of the network. Taking the mean allows for one or many views to be present. We can also train a model on a subset of views. Another approach called DualNet is to run independent networks completely and then concatenate their feature representations having only a single linear classifier at the end. However, when training this approach, if a single view is predictive, then the model might ignore the other views and their potential benefits. An approach to deal with this is called aux loss, where three losses are minimized simultaneously. Here, independent losses ensure that each view is not ignored. These methods are generally equivalent once their hyperparameters have been tuned, but a key difference is the ease of training and finding the optimal hyperparameters. Here, we see the results of a random hyperparameter search over all the methods presented. The CL here stands for curriculum learning, where the different views are sometimes presented independently with the goal of preparing the network to work while only seeing one view. Given the time and cost needed to train these large models, picking a solution which will likely work on the first try is important.